drive to Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee. The 92nd meeting all time between Kentucky and Tennessee for more than 100,000 fans. And the teams are ready to go. Kentucky comes in at four and six. Tennessee at seven and two, ranked ninth in the nation. Kentucky won the toss and deferred. Tennessee elected to receive, so Tobin Anderson will kick it away to Terry Fair, one of the most dangerous return men in the country. Final game of the season for Kentucky. The last game of the Bill Curry era. After seven seasons as head coach at Kentucky, this is his last game. Short kickoff taken by Fair at the 13-yard line. And good coverage by the Cats as Fair goes down to the 26. Tackled by Jeff Snedeker. Peyton Manning, the junior quarterback, suffered a right knee sprain in last week's win over Arkansas. Wore a brace through much of the week. The knee is still a little bit sore, but he will start the game. And he told us yesterday he did not expect the knee to hinder his performance. John McDonough with Mike Mayock and Gus Johnson. Happy to have you with us for the battle for the beer barrel. Manning after play action fake has a man first down. Marcus Nash taken down by Van Niles after a gain out to the 39 yard line. The rest of the offense for Tennessee. Jay Graham and Chester Ford in the backfield. Joey Kenneth, the all-time leading receiver at Tennessee with Marcus Nash, the other wideout. Dustin Moore, the tight end. Totally revamped offensive line with Robert Poole now at left tackle. Spencer Riley, Trey Teague, Mercedes Hamilton, and Chad Clifton. The rest of the offensive line. On a single offensive line starter in the same position at which he appeared in the first game of the season against UNLV. Graham busting through a big hole, close to another first out at the 50-yard line, tackled by the free safety, Keo Wilson. Now the Kentucky defense, a four-man front. Chris Ward leads the SEC in sacks with Jacobs, Tanner, and Supi up front. Mike Schellenberger, the middle linebacker with Deli Ali and Jeff Snedeker. And the veteran secondary, Hiles, Boyd, and Wilson are seniors. Ward is a junior. Eight of 11 for Graham. Manning over the middle, incomplete. Crowd looking for a flag. Yep. Marcus Nash, the intended receiver. There are late flags. Now, Sean, you know me, an ex-defensive back, I hardly ever say it's pass interference, but I think Lehman Boyd was all over him in that situation. It was a blitz, Deli Ali coming off the corner. Dick Burleson leading the Southeastern Conference officiating crew. Now remember, Boyd comes off the corner forcing man-to-man -man coverage. He's all over him before the ball gets there. Clearly, pass interference and an automatic first down. Boyd's a senior from Bowling Green, Kentucky, playing in his last game for the Wildcats. And is the leading tackler in the SEC among safeties. Last game for Bill Curry, and this is seventh season. The Cats are four and six. They were one and six when Curry received the word from the athletics director, C.M. Newton, that he'd be fired at the end of the year. They've won all three games since he was fired. They've played with emotion not previously seen this year. That's a good word to use, Sean. We were in Auburn last week, and Terry Bowden talked about football being an emotional game, and you can see the difference. We had them earlier this year. They played horribly. The last three weeks have really stepped it up. Graham got it back inside. Quality run down to the 32-yard line. Jeff Tanner, the left tackle, made the tackle. Frustrating year for Graham with the offensive line problems. They haven't been able to get him on track. Yeah, the, really, the key to this whole team right now is the ability to run the football and take a little bit of the pressure off Peyton Manning. He's taken quite a beating this year because everybody's been able to just lay their ears back and go. Eight of six on first down for Graham. Second down and four, opening possession of the football game, and Tennessee is on the move. Manning dropped the snap, and it's recovered by Mike Schellenberger of Kentucky. And let's remember, we talked about a revamped offensive line. They moved their starting left tackle to center. 
their best football player, Trey Tigg, is now the center. They didn't have any problems last week. The pulling right guard, Mercedes Hamilton, ran into the football, and it was recovered by Schnellenberger. Schellenberger. See, Hamilton hit it with his shoulder. Schellenberger, 49, jumps on it. But we do have a penalty flag. Thrown very late. And it's for a personal foul against Kentucky. After the fumble, I believe. Yeah, it will not change the possession. It'll just move it back 15 yards. Dead ball foul. Personal foul. Against the recovering team. First down and 10. Kentucky led on offense by Billy Jack Haskins. He has been terrific lately, the junior from Paducah, Kentucky, battling through much of the season with the highly touted freshman Tim Couch for the starting position. But with his play of late, he has solidified his hold on the starting quarterback spot. Ordinarily a one-back offense for Kentucky, but they line up Jimmy Haley in the backfield in front of Derek Logan, and they throw, and it is caught. Isaac Curtis, the tight end, all the way out to the 41-yard line, tackled by the safety, Jason Parker. Boy, I love the call, first and 10. People have talked about how more aggressively Bill Curry's called the offense since he's been fired. First play of the game, play action. They fake it to their freshman tailback, Logan, and they get their best tight end, Isaac Curtis, wide open in the hole. That's an excellent first down play for Kentucky. He's Isaac Curtis the third, the son of the former Cincinnati Bengals wide receiver. Isaac Curtis played 12 years for the Bengals and was their all-time leading receiver when he retired. Haskins on the keeper, tackled by Al Wilson. Perhaps a gain of one, and that's all for Billy Jack. The rest of the offensive starters for Kentucky. Logan in the customary one-back set with two tight ends, Spencer and Curtis. Jasuma, Sims, and Craig Yeast are the wideouts. The offensive line improving as the season has gone along. The Laparel, Schlarman, Watts, Streck, and Comstock. The front five. The lone bag is Derek Logan. The improvement of Kentucky in the second half of the season coinciding with the performances of Logan as well. Under pressure was Haskins, and his pass is too deep. Looking for Norman Mason, and it was overthrown. Raymond Austin had the coverage. It'll be third down and nine for Kentucky. No score. Nearly three minutes played. The defensive line for Tennessee adjusting the loss of Leonard Little, Jeff Coleman, Bill Duff, Ron Green, and Jonathan Brown. The front four. Tyrone Hines in the middle between Al Wilson and Craig King at linebacker. Veteran secondary Austin, Noel, Parker, and Fair. Third down. of time and is nearly intercepted. Raymond Austin had in his hands but couldn't squeeze it and Kentucky will punt. Austin's the captain of this defense was a former safety probably more natural at safety make what but watch him make a move on the football. No problem. He's got good coverage. Catch the football. Jimmy Carter has been busy this year. 81 punts. Very fair. Third of the nation punt returns. He's had two 86-yard touchdown returns. Oh, running back punts. He juggled that one but held on at the 27. No score early in Knoxville. With all the scores over the years in this rivalry since 1925. For the last 11 years, the beer barrel has remained right here in Knoxville as Tennessee's won the last 11 head-to-head -head with Kentucky. On first down, Jay Graham out to the 33, tripped up by Jeff Tanner. No score. Nearly three and a half minutes played. Graham... Came into today's game having rushed for 623 yards this year. Last year, he rushed for over 1,400 yards. With the line problems, he hasn't been as effective. Wide receiver screen for Jerry He's out to the 49-yard line. Tackled by Lehman Boyd and George Massey. 
Eight of 16. Like the call here. They look strong side and then come back to Joey Kent on the weak side. Couple stutter steps, comes back for the football. Spencer Riley with the good roll block in front of him makes the cut. And I'll tell you what, you've got to get up tighter on Joey Kent, one of the best pass receivers in the history of the University of Tennessee. With their all-time leading receiver in receptions, receiving yards, and touchdown receptions. Manning into traffic, and it is picked off by Van Hiles. He stepped in front of Andy McCullough and intercepted Manning's pass. So two possessions and two turnovers by Tennessee. The loss fumbled by Manning. Now an interception thrown by Peyton. Frustration for Tennessee. Two turnovers. Watch Hiles make the play on the football. Goes right through McCullough's hands. Makes a great play. That's his third interception of the year. Van Hiles is the big play guy on this defense. That's an excellent coverage. Man to man. Good break on the football. Kentucky defense doing the job. Hiles, a senior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, his eighth career interception. Rick Smith, the defensive coordinator, told us he has never coached a better person in 27 years. On the way is Derek Logan, deep into Tennessee territory and out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Raymond Austin pushed him out to save the touchdown. Logan barely saw the field the first five games of the season. The last five, he has been outstanding. Watch the fullback right here. That's a new guy, Jimmy Haley, a tight end at 245 pounds. He's going to push people in the hole. Great block, excuse me, break by Logan. A little quicker than we were led to believe. Does a nice job getting to the outside, and only Raymond Austin pushes him out of bounds. He's a true freshman from Chatham, Virginia, Derek Logan. Averaging 125 yards rushing per game over the last five. On first down after the 42-yard gain, Logan has one tackler to beat and couldn't beat him. But he has a first down. It appears inside the five. There's a late flag thrown. Jason Parker made the tackle. Interesting play call. Kentucky loves option, but remember their quarterback, Haskins, has a separated left shoulder. We were led to believe that that play probably couldn't be in the game plan today. It appears the flag is against Tennessee. The Kentucky players around Dick Burleson were applauding as they heard the conversation. We have a five-yard face mask penalty against the defense. Be half the distance to the goal, and will be a first down. What John Chavis, our defensive coordinator for Tennessee, said is when they run option, we got to get somebody in his face immediately. That was Buck Buxton. Forces the early pitch, but once again, Derek Logan gets on the edge, and with the face mask penalty, it's now first and goal on the two-yard line. You have 11 on the rush. The penalty added two more. First and goal at the two. Kentucky trying to score first in this one. Five minutes in. Logan stopped for a loss. Back to the three-yard line. Craig King led the group of Tennessee tacklers. Only 11 touchdowns in 21 possessions inside the red zone for the Kentucky offense. It's an offense that was terrible over the first seven games. A big reason why Coach Curry was fired, but much better lately. Yeah, and let's not forget that they've played tougher competition early in the season. Their last three wins coming against Georgia, Vanderbilt, Mississippi State. Logan has rushed for 52 yards already. He gets the carry and gets belted back at the five-yard line by Al Wilson. Well, this is a situation Tennessee has got to get the foot. Watch this guy. Watch how quick he is. Al Wilson, they say he's the fastest linebacker they've ever had here. Nobody touches him, makes the play from the inside out. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a sophomore who someday is going to be an All-American at Tennessee. John Chavis, the defensive coordinator, told us potentially one of the best ever at his position. And he also said Wilson, every bit important to their linebacking core, as Leonard Little was to their defensive front. Of course, Little out for the year with a knee injury. Time out. Back in a moment. No score midway through the first quarter. Watch out for Haskins out on the edge. Pass run option. Two tight ends. Quarterback draw, stopped by Tennessee. Ron Green. 
They spread the field to run quarterback draw. Good play inside the 10-yard line, but you got to give Ron Green and Jeff Coleman a lot of credit. Stay in their lanes, make the play, and Kentucky's going to go, apparently, for the field goal. Haskins holds for Brian Johnson. A junior is four out of seven. This from a tough angle. 23 yards to the right half mark, and it is good. Kentucky first on the board on the field goal by Johnson. It's 3 0. They've been playing for that beer barrel since 1925. Mark Levine returns Anderson's kickoff. He started at the three, weaves through traffic, out to the 25. As we've mentioned, this is the final game for Bill Curry at Kentucky. And before today's kickoff, Gus Johnson spoke with the coach. Coach, your final game, what did you have a chance to tell your team uh, as they took the field today? Well, it's been such a privilege to work with them under these conditions. I told them that I love them, proud of them, regardless of the results today. But we would like to finish this well. We've got a chance to establish something that hasn't been done before. And um, I'll never forget this group of men. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Nor are they likely to forget him. Van Hiles told us he's learned so much about Coach Curry from life that it's mind-boggling. His team inspired again today. It's a sack of Manning back at the 16-yard line. Jeff Snedeker and Kurt Supi dropping Manning for the loss. We've talked all along about the offensive line, their inability, A, to run the football, and B, to protect the franchise. Right there, Peyton. Pump fake, Snedeker get elevates, but does a nice job with the left hand. Number 54, Kurt, Kurt Soupy steps in there also for the first sack of Manning. Second and 18 now after a loss of eight. Tennessee has already turned it over twice, a Manning fumble, and Peyton has thrown an interception. Mark Levine, the tailback now. He got popped as he reached the 20. Tackled by Mike Schellenberger was a big question if Schellenberger would even play. He's had a severely sprained ankle, didn't practice this week. He was questionable right up to the kickoff. As a matter of fact, we were told because he was a senior, he may play the first play and then leave the game. But he wants to play in his last game and the last for the coach that he admires so much. Yeah, and he's the kind of kid that, that they're going to have to drag him out of there. Outstanding student is Schellenberger. Already completed his degree in finance, now working toward his MBA. Graduated. Magna Cum Laude from the University of Kentucky with a GPA of 3.8. Manning pressured in the pocket and has his man. Harris Price will score. defensive coordinator from Kentucky Rick Smith he said we've got to force turnovers which they've done but he also said we can't give up the big play and that's exactly what happened after a big sack they give up the long play to price and all of a sudden they're losing Jeff Paul that's the extra point 80 yards on the pass play for Philip Fulmer's offense Manning to price Second touchdown reception of the season for the sophomore, Peerless Price. They just have so many weapons offensively. Price has stepped it up earlier this year. Littleton Ward gets beat from the corner. Hiles tries to help out, misses the tackle. And at this point, there's nobody on the Kentucky club that's going to be able to catch Peerless Price. High angle. Here we go. We're going to have down here on a dig pattern. And you see two people miss tackles. First guy will be Littleton Ward, and the second guy will be the safety coming over the top. Van Hiles right there misses the key tackle, and if you're a safety, and he's a good safety, you can't take the angle he took. It costs you seven points. Touchdown play, 80 yards. The drive officially 76. They went backwards after the sack. Only three plays on that scoring drive needed by Tennessee to put the first touchdown of the game on the board it's price from dayton ohio he's really coming on as the 
season progresses. Had five catches last week in the win over Arkansas. Jeff Hall will kick off to Keo Sanford, number six, and Harold Dennis, number 35. Short approach and a pop up, and it is fumbled and recovered at the 30 yard line. Volunteers indicating they have it, and they do. Lee Wesley popped up the football for Kentucky. First big mistake made by the Wildcats. And just this quickly, you can get blown out of a football game with Tennessee. They make the right call, the fair catch call by number 33. Fillmore Webster is a good call. Nothing wrong with the call, but you got to catch the football. Wayne Goodrich recovered. Whistles before the play. There was plenty of time on the play clock. It wasn't that. Dead ball foul. Encroachment by the offensive line. Five yard penalty. First down. So far, Sean, both teams making mistake. Tennessee, a couple of turnovers, sloppy penalty right there. Kentucky, number one, miss a tackle in a cover two situation where you can never miss a tackle. And then you drop the football in the ensuing kickoff. A little sloppy here. Mark Levine, the lone back. Four wide receivers of the game now for Tennessee. No tight end. Manning with a lot of time. Dumps it short. It's dropped by Levine coming out of the backfield. And it will be second down and 15. 6.22 left in the first quarter. Tennessee leads Kentucky 7-3. They've had great success on first down with the pass attack. Look at last week against Arkansas. They threw the ball 20 times on first down with Peyton Manning completed 17. That's one of the reasons why they lead the SEC in third down efficiency. Because when it gets to third down, there's not a whole lot left to gain. Ball spread the field. Manning out of the shotgun. And again with all day to throw. And it is caught at the 20 yard line for a first down to Joey Kent. Tackled by Keo Wilson, the free safety. But it is good for a first down to the 20. And what happens here is you're going to see a little post corner route here against the cover two look. This corner right here does not sink back far enough to get underneath the pattern. Manning, as usual, does a great job reading it. The corner jumps up in front of him, which he shouldn't do, and bang. Big play. You can't ever sink down there and put the guy in front of you because you've got to cover the man behind you. Chester Ford, the fullback of Jay Graham in the eye. Manning under pressure, throws, top first down inside the 10 is Joey Kent again. And Hiles had the coverage. First and goal for Tennessee. The ball's already lead 7-3. to three. And you got to protect your franchise. And Peyton got beat up last week, and Sean was watching the tape from that. Even though they won 55-14, to 14, it's 14-14 at half, and every time he throws the football, they're hitting him. Same thing happened there. Snedeker, the linebacker, pounded him after the throw. Taking a lot of wear and tear. This time they hand it to Graham, and he is down to the goal line and in. Touchdown. There is a flag on the play. If it stands, it's a seven-yard run for a TD by Jay Graham. Offside against the defense. Penalty is declined. Touchdown is good. We go right over left guard, left tackle, pull, and Riley. Good block by the fullback, number 20, Chester Ford. And at that point, Jay Graham with tough, hard-nosed football gets into the end zone. 
Lead block by the fullback on Deli Ali. Good cut by Graham. Let's see if the... I don't think the football gets over, folks. And Hall hooked the extra point through the uprights. 14 to 3 balls. And Jeff Hall pops it up high. And another fair catch call for this time made by Isaac Curtis. And they'll put it in play of the 24-yard line. So Kentucky had some chances early to take a big lead and gather some momentum on the two turnovers by Tennessee. They managed only three points, and now they trailed the number nine team in the country by 11. Logan the lone back behind Billy Jack Haskins. And they give it to Derek Logan. More impressive about his success lately is that he's been doing it with a broken bone around his eye, the orbital bone, the eye socket. Broken in a game against South Carolina, but that hasn't slowed him down one bit. He played several weeks with a visor, not wearing it today. He's impressive. 6'2", 220. Take a look at this. He wasn't even on the depth chart five weeks ago, yet now he's averaged 125 yards a game the last five weeks, and he's also stepped it up into three wins over 150 yards a game. Good fake by Haskins. Has Curtis open. And he's out of bounds with a first down at the 38-yard line. See, that's what Kentucky needs to do on first down, play action, get Haskins on the corner where he's most dangerous, try and get the ball to Curtis, occasionally to the wide receivers. That's where Billy Jack Haskins is at his best, on the corner. 18 catches for the season now for Isaac Curtis III, a senior from Cincinnati. That's the most receptions by a... Kentucky tight end since 1990. Rodney Jackson had 27. Jimmy Haley back in the backfield, ordinarily a tight end, but playing fullback as their fullbacks are banged up. Tough run by Logan as he got across the 40. And out to the 42, knocked down by Jeff Coleman. Coleman made the tackle, but Craig King, the linebacker, really blew up the fullback that time, really made the play easier for Coleman to slide down, make the tackle. King and Nick Jester have been splitting the time throughout the season at the right linebacker position, but lately Jester's been banged up, bothered by a sprained foot. But King got the start today. Second and seven. 20 remaining first quarter. Tennessee leads 14 to three. Logan, following the block of Haley, got very little, perhaps a yard. Craig King. One of the 19 seniors playing in his final home game made the tackle for Tennessee. And King and Jester, as you just mentioned, split time. Coleman, Duff, some of the older guys stepping it up. The problem for Tennessee this year has not been defensively. They've played solidly. It's been whether or not they can run the football and protect the quarterback. Third and six. Logan alone back. Three wide receivers. for Curtis incomplete. Thrown behind him. Haskins was pressured and had to throw off his back foot. And Al Wilson had the coverage on Curtis. The people looked like Peebles got the pressure on him, but the Isaac Curtis was wide open. That should have been a first down. Jimmy Carter will punt for the second time. Kentucky has punted more frequently this year than Tennessee has the last two seasons combined. As a matter of fact, Carter earlier this year in a game on CBS punted 13 times in the game at Florida. That's a round fumble on the punt, and it looks like Tennessee has coughed it up for the third time. It has. It's recovered by Bob Holmberg. Well, let's face it. Tennessee's doing everything they can to keep Kentucky in this football game. Terry Fair is the normal return man, but this was a poor kick. So one of the wing guys has to step up. Mishandles the football. As Corey Gaines, the backup defensive back, mishandles the football. Now Kentucky with another opportunity. Certainly the Wildcats couldn't ask for much more help than they have received from Tennessee. Flag on the play. And Logan down 
As he got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. He was moving along the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure which way they're going to call this because Tennessee guys jumped, but I thought I saw somebody from uh, Kentucky flinch also. There's no question, though, that a couple of the Tennessee guys jumped. We had double foul. Offsides against the defense. Illegal motion against the offense. Replay the down. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Have you... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I've ever seen that. You know, I don't. I just don't get that one. That's that's a re now. You're going to see a jump here and a jump here. Let's see what happens right here with Kentucky. Also, there's the two guys from jumping. There's a little flinch, but mm. you know that's that's a referee that doesn't want to make a decision. So they'll do it again, and it's a handoff to Logan. Stood up by Craig King at the 24-yard line. We're under three minutes left in the first quarter. Tennessee leads 14 to three. Logan's a true freshman from Chatham, Virginia, but last year he attended Marine Military Academy in Texas, and he led the entire state of Texas in high school rushing with better than 1,900 yards. 63 yards on eight carries today. Second down and six. Haskins going for the end zone. There is a flag down. The catch is made. It's a touchdown for Norman Mason if the play stands. Two flags down at the 20-yard line. About five yards from the line of scrimmage. How often do you see the wide receiver make the play on an underthrown pass in that situation? Because the defensive back has no awareness of where the football is. There are two flags down, thrown within about five yards of each other right along the 20-yard line. We have holding against the defense. Penalty is declined. Touchdown. Officially a 24-yard touchdown pass. Haskins to Norman Mason, the junior from Paducah, Kentucky. Haskins does a good job because he gets clocked from the backside just as he releases the football. And then what a good job by Norman Mason. The ball's underthrown, comes back to the football. The defensive back's on the ground. All of a sudden, we got a football game. Ryan Johnson will attempt the extra point. He's a perfect 15 of 15 this year. It is good. And with 2.22 remaining in the first quarter, Kentucky is back within four. And he is their best defensive lineman. Looked like he had a right knee injury, but he did walk off under his own power. Mike Levine leading through traffic and now has room along the near sideline. Levine finally taken down at the 39-yard line of Kentucky. Quentin McCord saved the touchdown, running him down from behind. A Mark Levine fly, so how quick must Quentin McCord be? Great individual effort by Levine. I thought he was tackled right around the 20-yard line. He's going to make a good cut right there. Makes another one past Snedeker, and now in the open field, you think he's got a win, but backup wide receiver Quentin McCord, number 12, is going to chase him down on a great hustle play. All kinds of plays on special teams here in the first quarter. Some good, some bad. Manning, deep down the field, and it is caught by Nash. Very close to a first down at the 29-yard line. Under two minutes left in a... Action-packed first quarter. Four turnovers already. Kentucky, very good with the football for the season, plus eight in turnover margin coming in. They have a three-point advantage today in points off turnovers. Pass to Nash came up just short of the first down. Second and less than a yard. Jay Graham alone back. Two tight ends. Graham tripped up. Appears to be short of the first down. Perhaps a slight loss of the play as Lehman Boyd, the strong safety, came up to make a fine play. 
Boyd's got 86 tackles coming into today's game. That's the most by any strong safety in the entire SEC. And, Sean, he got married back on September 14th. We had him the following week. He had a career day. Had about, I, I forget how many tackles, 16, 18 tackles. Had a huge day the week after he got married. Married his wife, Kelly, on September 14th. The next week against Indiana had 16 tackles. Going two for a loss. Speaking of a loss, Manning lost the football. And it's a loss back to the 35-yard line. You know, I hate... I really hate to keep going back to the fact that you move your left tackle to center, but Trey Teague moves to center. Phil Palmer's going to take a timeout here, but I'm not sure he ever had the football cleanly. Look, he's still handling the football. He never had it. That's twice today Manning's had trouble with the snap, and it's a converted left tackle at center. Well, they should have plenty of opportunity to practice the snap because Trey Teague, the new center, and Peyton Manning, the quarterback, are roommates. Back in a moment. As Rito goes down against Florida early in the year. Going for it on fourth down and six of the Kentucky 35. Graham on back. Manning is changing the play. He has lots of time and throws short. Incomplete. Joey Kent was open, but the pass skipped into him. Drawing a wince from Philip Fulmer as the ball goes over to Kentucky on downs. Don't usually see Peyton Manning under throw a football like this. Kent was open, but the ball hops to him. There's the old offensive lineman saying, oh, man. And once again, the ball's thrown low and behind. Clearly a good call. Kentucky takes over on downs. A good field position at its own 35, trailing by four final seconds of the first quarter. Logan bounced off the hit and got upended by Raymond Austin. Gain out to the 38-yard line, a three-yard pickup on the final play of the first quarter. At the end of one quarter, it's Tennessee 14 and Kentucky 10. We'll return to Neyland Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. Tennessee leads 14 to 10. First play of the second quarter, second down at seven for Kentucky at its own 38. John McDonough with Mike Mayock and Gus Johnson at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. Haskins sets up a screen. Logan's in trouble. He's dropped for a loss. Back at the 37-yard line, Raymond Austin up from his cornerback spot. Tyrone Hines, a middle linebacker, also in on the play. Kentucky scored first after an interception by Hiles. Brian Johnson kicked a 23-yard field goal. Then Tennessee got an 80-yard pass from Manning to Price to make it 7-3, 14-3, after a run of seven yards by Jay Graham. Then Norman Mason with a 24-yard pass from Billy Jack Haskins after a fumbled punt. Three on third down. Haskins hit as he threw, but it's a completion. Then it is a loose football, and they are ruling it an incomplete pass. Harold Dennis belted by Nick Jester. Raymond Austin wound up with the football, but after some delay, the officials ruled it an incomplete pass. I'll tell you, Haskins is taking a beating, takes another hit right up the middle. The catch should be made right there, but look at the hit by Nick Jester. The ball flies loose. Jason Watts, the center, gets beat. The hit by number 90, Phil Billy Barron. Haskins taking a beating today. Jimmy Carter. Terry Fair. Caught it at the 26. Snedeker ran him down at the 33. We'll return to Neyland Stadium after this word from your local station. Go! Go! A 14 to 10 lead over Kentucky. First and 10 for the Volunteers. Eric Lane and Sean Bryson now comprise the backfield. Here's Bryson on the move. 
Taken down from behind. The ball pops up, but he's down by contact at the 25-yard line. Lehman Boyd saved the touchdown for the Kentucky defense. Bryson, just into the game, has the longest run of his sophomore season. You know, they're about five deep at tailback. Bryson had mono earlier this year. He's a very talented kid. Watch what happens right here at the point of attack. Great blocks. We've given that offensive line a bunch of abuse. They do a great job. The cutback by Bryson, the speed to run away from the free safety, Wilson, and only a last-minute tackle by Boyd saves a touchdown. 42-yard gain. Ball comes loose after contact with the ground. Correct call by the ref. In backfield. And they hand it off to Peerless Price on a reverse. And he has a first down and got belted out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Watch Poole, the tackle here. He's going to go downfield and try and make the key block that would spring for touchdown on Van Hiles. There's Van Hiles. It looks like it's a dead-end position, but watch the athletic move jumps over the top and still makes the tackle. Folks, that's one against two, and one wins. Injured player for Kentucky, Keo Wilson, the free safety, is down to the 19-yard line. So far, Peerless Price has made two big plays today. The 80-yard touchdown reception, and then he comes right back with the reverse. 14 to 10. Tennessee has the lead. We'll return to Knoxville in a moment. Huge win for Michigan. And Kentucky trying to pull off a major upset here at Tennessee this afternoon. They've been outgained by... A margin of nearly two to one already 220 yards of total offense for Tennessee and they have it first down and 10 of the 13 of Kentucky. And he's put past caught. Jermaine Copeland who doubles his backup quarterback playing wide receiver this afternoon. He went down to the five yard line about a yard and a half shy of a first down. They say he's the real deal, too. He's 6'4", 210 pounds, mini slash, wide receiver, quarterback. Now 2,962 passing yards this season for Peyton Manning. Setting the single-season Tennessee record, breaking the record he set last year. Sean Bryson got nothing. Back to the five, and that's all. So it'll be third down at about a yard and a half. Mike Schellenberger made the play on Bryson. Schellenberger hanging in there pretty tough, isn't he, for a guy that we suspected might only play one play in honor of this being his last game as a senior. Third down. Tennessee leads by four. Three minutes into the second quarter. Kentucky came on a blitz. And it is Eric Lane, the fullback, for the first down. Knocked down by Keo Wilson, but it's first and goal for the balls at the two-yard line. The fullbacks don't carry the football much for Philip Fulmer. Just the ninth rush of the season for Eric Lane, a senior from East Orange, New Jersey. You mentioned Keo Wilson made the tackle. Good to see that he came right back into the game after being shaken up a moment ago. Offensive statistics beginning to build very quickly for, for Tennessee. Full house backfield now. Copeland's at quarterback. There's a flag down. The handoff goes right down to the goal line. Well, there is a flag. There's Copeland doing his Cordell Stewart imitation. With the ball at the two-yard line. Don Bryson took the handoff. They'll probably take the penalty. And they will. Well, first and goal at the one. Offside and goal. against the defense. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat the down. 
Yeah, he wanted to know who it was there, Sean. But unlike the NFL, they don't identify numbers to us, although they will give the coaches the courtesy. In the full house backfield. Two fullbacks and Bryce, and this time they hand it up to Chester Ford, and he gets stacked up. It'll be second and goal. Now here's a situation if, if Philip Fulmer wants to be aggressive. Looks like he's going to either go back with Manning. Ground level shot, fullback. As Sean just mentioned, hardly ever gets the call here. That's just the 19th carry for any fullback this year. They have six total receptions. In the Tennessee offense, if you're a fullback, you're a glorified guard, basically. Same alignment. Copeland, the quarterback. Watch option. And it's a touchdown for Chester Ford, his first of the season. And he stuck the ball right in the face of Jeff Snedeker. Late flag thrown. Will be a touchdown. Dead ball, personal foul against the offense. Penalty will be administered on the kickoff. Wonder if it was that routine of sticking the ball in Snedeker's face by Ford after he scored the touchdown. Yeah, when they changed the rule on the excessive celebration and the taunting two years ago, the whole theory there was that you were supposed to celebrate with your teammates and not against the other team. Jeff Hall has the extra point. He hooked the first two just inside the left upright. He adjusted that time and just did get it inside the right upright. Coach Fulmer giving Chester Ford an earful after this, which will cost him 15 yards on the kickoff. Yeah. Apparently, Chester's not used to scoring a touchdown because he certainly should not have done that. Well, Smokey doesn't seem all that happy despite the fact that Tennessee has opened up an 11-point lead. 21-10 after the one-yard touchdown run by Chester Ford. Having a 67-yard drive in 3 minutes and 14 seconds. Jeff Hall kicks off. Popped up the last few. As a result, Keo Sanford and Harold Dennis are only standing at their 20-yard line. Comes down to Harold Dennis. Dennis, flag down. Might be for an illegal block against David Ginn. Trying to help Dennis along the near sideline. Dennis limped off as he was tackled at the 43. Illegal block in the back on the receiving team. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. And that diminishes a fine return by Dennis. Beginning Thanksgiving Day and continuing Friday in prime time, CBS Sports again presents Ice Wars, the USA versus the world. Team USA digs in to defend its title, sparked by Brian Boitano, Jill Trenery, and Scott Hamilton. The world team counters with the magic of Katarina Vitt, Victor Petrenko, Kurt Browning, and more. It's all beginning Thanksgiving Day on CBS Sports. Terry, the backup right defensive end, number 22, a sophomore from Warrington, North Carolina. First and 10, Tennessee is used to the tendencies of the Kentucky team, which is to run the football on first down, and boy, are they stacking up the line of scrimmage. Offside, in the neutral zone against the defense, five-yard penalty to the previous spot, repeat first down. Mm. That's a killer for a coach. You get in the right defense, you make the play, and you just shoot yourself in the foot. Been a frustrating year for Philip Fulmer. His team picked number one in the nation in several preseason polls. Might have been unrealistic given the major changeover that we spoke of in the offensive line. With the loss to Florida early, left his team searching for motivation. A new goal. Haskins running the option. He keeps and is smothered. Leading the 
group of tacklers Nick Jester and playing with that separated left shoulder he's, he's hurt yeah and he's going to come off Timmy Couch has got to get ready very quickly now we were told they wouldn't run much option because of the shoulder injury to Haskins they run it and this was their biggest concern that he'd be hurt while running it I think their corner Ray Austin made the hit counter option down the line of scrimmage the concern here is the left shoulder which was separated a week ago number 28 comes in late right there and we've got Tim Couch in the ball game and a big response by the crowd he chose Kentucky over Tennessee in a much publicized recruiting battle Logan tripped up by Terry Fair short of a first down at the 35 so here's Couch the true freshman from Hyden Kentucky as we said, elected to go to Kentucky instead of Tennessee, and the fans here booed lustily as he trotted onto the field seconds ago. And remember what John Chavis, defensive coordinator from Tennessee, said yesterday. When he gets in the game, we're going to find out how he can handle pressure. Third down and two. They give it to Haley. First time he has carried the ball this year. And Jimmy Haley appears to have a first down out of the 37-yard line. It is. A first down for the true freshman from Lowell, Massachusetts. He played last year as a teammate of Derek Logan at Marine Military Academy in Texas. And Haskins is back into the game. Bill Curry calls Billy Jack Haskins one of the greatest leaders I've ever seen anywhere. It's going to take a major injury to keep him out of this football game. Logan in trouble. They're creeping up now and starting to stuff the run. Nick Jester and Bill Duff combining to drop Logan for a loss back to the 35-yard line. Yeah, their Will linebacker, which is the position shared by Jester and King, is having a nice game today. Both of them stuffing run. This time, Jester did a nice job. I really believe if Kentucky wants to move the ball consistently, they've got to do more than run the football on first down because at this point, Tennessee's got seven, eight, nine in the box every first down situation. Three wide receivers now on second down and 12. Logan 65 yards rushing on 11 carries. Haskins throws and it is nearly intercepted by Raymond Austin. He stepped in front of Jesuma Sims and almost had the INT. Well, I really like this guy. Was an inside guy of safety. Watched the break on the football. Man-to-man -man coverage, no help. He had four yards off. Oh, that's the second play of the game. He should have made the interception. Does everything right but catch the football. Now third down and 12. There's Raymond Austin, a team captain, making his 23rd consecutive start today. MVP of the Citrus Bowl as a freshman back in 93. That's a lateral, and Logan is smothered for another big loss back to the 29. Jonathan Brown and Raymond Austin combining to make the play for Tennessee. Tough play to run against the two deep coverage because Austin was already kicked up on the line of scrimmage, pushes the wide receiver out, and he's already up there to make the play on the screen. Screen pass, here come the linemen, but look at Austin out there with contain, forces it back inside for Jonathan Brown. Jimmy Carter, no relation to the former president. By the same name, hunting it away to Terry Fair, who calls for a fair catch at the 32. That's where Tennessee will begin. First and 10, already leading 21 10. 6.56 remaining in the first half here in Knoxville. 6.56 remaining in the second quarter play. Tennessee up 21 to 10. And just to give you an idea of how much pain Billy Jack. Haskins is in. Sue Stanley, the Kentucky trainer, massaged his left shoulder when he came off the field the first time, and when she put her hands on his shoulder, he almost dropped to his knees in pain. He's getting wrapped up right now, and we'll go back. Let's go back upstairs to Sean. Thank you, Gus. Peyton Manning throws it in the flat drop by Graham. Probably just as well for Tennessee that he did drop it as Snedeker was right there. Chris Ward also has not returned to action since being injured on the last Kentucky extra point, the only Kentucky extra point of this game, and they're still working on his right knee, so it appears they're aiming for his return. He leads the SEC in sacks this season with 10. 
Yeah, this is a critical situation for Kentucky right now. 6.49 left in the first half. You're down 21-10. to 10. You've given up a couple of big plays here. You can't afford to give up any more big plays and go down at halftime 28-10. to 10. You've got to step up and make a play. Ben Bird, number 53, has taken the place of Ward at right defensive end. Manning out quickly for Nash, and he stumbles out to the 41-yard line, short of a first down. Marcus Nash improving in the late season. The junior has had three straight games now with six catches. Good job by Manning identifying blitz. Take the inside receiver Nash and run him out. I think one of the most impressive things, he forget about his physical attributes, they're obvious. This is a smart quarterback, understands the game. Third down and three. Tennessee is two out of three on third down today. Rose caught. Close to a first down. It appears to be a first down for Nash. Around the 44-yard line. Saw the numbers from Marcus a moment ago. He opened the season with back-to-back 100-yard -back receiving games against UNLV and UCLA. Cooled off for a while. But has been a big factor lately. And his reception is good for a first down kind of interesting they've almost given up on the run again Sean they had a couple big plays early with Graham but they've yet to go back to it and now it's the ball control offense controlled by the passing game from the 43 Graham alone back first and ten five and a half minutes left in the first half Tennessee leads 21 10 Graham with lots of running room along the far sideline and he's bumped out by Lehman Boyd at the 38-yard line of Kentucky. 18 yards on the pass to Jay Graham. The outside linebacker Delia Lee was limping prior to the, this play here, and he never even got close to covering out in the flat. Manning understands before the snap what he is doing. He's going to go back weak side, and at this point, Ali's not even in our framing, and that was his man. It is a banged up Kentucky defense. Ward on the sidelines. Schellenberger playing with a severely sprained ankle. Ali was getting attention a moment ago. They have a man open. They have a touchdown. Andy McCullough. Another big play for the balls. This one covers 38 yards. Busted coverage there, either Van Hiles or Keo Wilson. You see this so often. There's Hiles on the corner right now. Does he have deeper? Does he, he see him hesitate? He goes up and covers short, or should Wilson have been over the top deep? Second touchdown pass of the game for Manning. It puts him over 3,000 yards passing for the season. 28-10, balls. Talked about big plays. Here's another one. Look, your corner, Van Hiles, your safety, Keo Wilson, he's supposed to have deep half. He's supposed to contact this guy and slow him down. Guess what? They're both wrong. He lets McCullough run right by him. Wilson takes a horrible angle, doesn't get over top. The result, Manning to McCullough, touchdown. Fourth touchdown reception of the season for Andy McCullough, the junior from Dayton, Ohio. Almost an embarrassment of riches of the wide receiver position for Tennessee. And once again, Ali requires medical attention on the sideline. Second time we've seen him with a shoe off on the Kentucky bench. Jeff Hall kicks off. Keo Sanford and Harold Dennis backed up. Standing on the 20 for the last kickoff. Sanford takes it from the 13. Find a fine room on the near sideline. Keo Sanford runs out of bounds at the 43. Another fine return. And we check in with Gus Johnson. Thanks a lot, Sean. In terms of Ali, he has a sprained ankle, and they are retaping him and trying to get him ready to go back into the football game. And Chris Ward, their big-time right end, also took a helmet on his knee. He's gone into the football game, and he's come back out, and they're continuing to monitor his situation. 
Tennessee scoring drive, 67 yards, capped on the pass play to McCall. They're running on virtually every first down, and Tennessee is not fooled. Logan thrown for a loss. And you've got to take advantage of what your team does best. Watch number 97, Buck Buxton. Left side of your screen, splits the double team, makes a tackle in the backfield. Down 28 to 10 late in the half. You've got to take advantage of what your quarterback does best, and that's play action, get him outside, and give him the run pass option. Kentucky in reverse here in the second quarter, minus nine yards of offense. Tennessee's had 133 in this quarter. Second and long, Logan stopped immediately by Ron Green. Front seven for Tennessee doing a nice job today, not giving dirt, with the exception of one or two early runs today in the first half, really have not yielded anything in the run game to Kentucky since then. Another loss of a couple back to the 35. Now it's third down at 18. If they're not careful here, they're going to give the football back to Tennessee with Peyton Manning having plenty of time to go down the field again. 3.45 left in the half. Each team with two timeouts left here in the first half. Quick pass, caught. Sims with some running to do. He is short of a first down by about a yard. Needed 18, got 17. Jason Parker made the tackle. Just the fifth catch of the year for Jasuma Sims, known as a ferocious blocker at the wide receiver position. Good job reading blitz. Al Wilson's coming from the left side of the screen. Three-step drop, little post. Austin's late coming up, compounds it by missing the tackle. Real good job by Sims to almost get to the first down marker. They're going to go for the first down on fourth down and one. Kentucky trails by 18 points with three minutes left in the first half. Jimmy Haley bounced off ahead and appeared to get the first down. He did to the 46. <laughs> Jimmy Haley's a load at fullback. He's listed as a tight end, 6'3", 240, the freshman. Hardly saw him at tape all year. I mean, any film I've watched yet, he started the game today and has made a couple of good plays. Runs through an arm tackle, crawls a little bit, gets past Peebles, and it's first down. Well, he did not have a carry or reception for the year coming into this game, but with injuries to their regular fullbacks, Lee Wesley and Michael Woodford. Haley's been thrust into the spotlight today. He got thrust into the line for no gain on that handoff. And we're down to two and a half minutes left in the first half. Now, if I'm Elliot Uzelak and Bill Curry, I'm thinking I need to get the football into the end zone. Coach Curry knows down 28 to 10, Peyton Manning having the kind of game he's having, he's got to he's got to start a track meet here. Kevin Coleman has come into the game at wide receiver number 19. Haskins. Wrapped up, still manages to throw, and that's a loss on the play. The pass was caught by Isaac Curtis. Tory Noel made the tackle. Jonathan Brown had Haskins by the shirt, but could not complete the sack. It would have been better off for Kentucky being an incompletion, however, as it's a loss back to the 48-yard line. And remember, in the NFL, you may have an in-the-grasp role, but in college football, if you're up, you're playing. Haskins trying to just throw Brown off him, throw him off him. He's hanging in there, completes the pass. And trying to bat him away with that injured left shoulder and arm. <laughs> the chicken wing wasn't getting it done. Third down and 12. Down to a minute 20. Left in the half. They try to draw, and it was stopped by Tennessee. Nick Jester led the defense. And Kentucky sends the punt team out of the field. I think that's a very conservative play calling series right there. On fourth and one, you go for it, which is an aggressive move. Why pull back and run the ball two of the three times after that? There's been a lot of talk by the Kentucky coaches and by the Tennessee coaches that the Kentucky coaches have been much more aggressive since they were fired. When you go, you're going to be fired at the end of the year. Why not roll the dice? Last week's a perfect example. They had fourth and 17 against Vanderbilt, line up to kick the field goal, and instead they roll out, hit their tight end Curtis all the way down the one-yard line and score a touchdown thereafter. I mean, I, I think that's the way you got to play this game. It certainly seems as if Tennessee is looking now for Derek Logan on his last four carries. 
Logan has gone for minus two yards, minus six, minus two, and minus three. <laughs> At least he's consistent. Thanksgiving weekend, CBS Sports presents a slate of games sure to have an impact on the postseason bowl picture. On Friday, the LSU Tigers go at the Arkansas Razorbacks in an SEC clash. Some areas will see Virginia battling Virginia Tech. And on Saturday, the Miami Hurricanes try to put the brakes on Donovan McNabb and the Syracuse Orangemen in a game for the Big East title. Some viewers will see Georgia at Georgia Tech. Check your local listings. That's Thanksgiving weekend here on CBS Sports. There are four pretty good football games there, Sean, and I can't wait to get to Blacksburg next week. Hokies only have one loss in the year. I think they're undervalued. They ought to be much better than number 17. They only lost at Syracuse to an outstanding Syracuse team. Fair calling for a fair catch, then decided to let it bounce. Takes a great bounce for Kentucky, and it'll be down inside the 10. See, he thinks he was interfered with. Van Hiles ran right by him, and that's why Fair didn't try and catch the football. Back here, 28 to 10. Watch what happens right here. You've got to give the punt returner a two-yard cushion at all times. That's interfering with the opportunity to make a catch. It's not the call's not made, and in this case, Kentucky picks up about an extra 10 yards on that. Let's see if Tennessee likes to sit on the football with 55 seconds left in the half at their own six-yard line. Mark Levine. Kentucky better be careful or he could break at the distance. He has outstanding speed. He's been bothered for the last couple of weeks by a sprained ankle that kept him out of action the last two games for Tennessee. Gain of nine. They do go back into the huddle. Tennessee has one timeout left. Play action fake and Manning is going deep. Good into double coverage looking for Andy McCullough. Littleton Ward was running stride for stride with him. And Keo Wilson also had coverage for Kentucky. Well, that's an interesting play because now, <laughs> if Tennessee doesn't pick up the first down here, Kentucky could use a timeout and force a punt. And try and block the punt back here mm -hmm. close to their own end zone. Manning took another shot there. Backup defensive end Ben Bird in for Chris Ward really got a good hit on him after the ball was delivered. Ben a walk on now in scholarship of the senior year. Levine has the first down and stumbled down at the 22 yard line. We heard somebody hollering for a timeout with 14 seconds left in the half. Coming up at halftime, Pat O'Brien, Craig James, and Danny Sheridan get you caught up on all the scores and highlights on college football today. And there was not a timeout called. And that's the end of the first half. With the score, Tennessee 28 and Kentucky 10. We'll join Pat, Craig, and Danny with college football today right after this message and a word from your local station. of your screen Harold Dennis and on the right of that picture is Theo Sanford there's Sanford their leading kickoff return man short kickoff and another fair catch made this one by Isaac Curtis at the 21 yard line Sean McDonough with Mike Mayock it is an 18 point game at the half but as Bill Curry said a moment ago to Gus Johnson it was really just a couple of big plays that have provided the margin for Tennessee yeah it's big plays in the passing game to start with McCullough fearless Bryce went 80 yards but also in the run game they broke Bryson for 42 yards early most of the yards you saw today in the stat sheet have come on big plays from Tennessee Bill Curry's offense begins at its own 20 Haskins playing in significant pain with the Injured left shoulder, handed it off to Derek Logan. Logan got off to a quick start, but Tennessee has been keying on him, and he's done very little lately. Tyrone Hines made the tackle. Only three of those 126 yards for Tennessee came in the second quarter, the rest in the first quarter. And rushing yards, one of the keys we've talked about, 93 yards there for Tennessee, but remember, 42 of them came from Bryson. Second down and ten. And the pass well short of the intended target, Craig Yeast. It'll be third down and ten. 
Last year, these two teams had a wild one in Lexington. 134-31 by Tennessee. And Haskins had to leave that game in the fourth quarter after a dramatic touchdown run that gave Kentucky a 31-27 lead. He went 47 yards, was bounced around all over the place. That play at the end of the year was selected as the most inspirational play in college football in 1995 by the College Sports Information Directors Association. Haskins hit as he threw and it passed well short of Isaac Curtis. And a bad start to the second half for Kentucky. Three plays and out without gaining a yard. Well, I'll tell you, that was an ugly series and a tough way to start the second half, as you just said, Sean. Terry Fair waiting for the punt from Jimmy Carter. The offense might want a presidential pardon from Jimmy Carter after that series. Very nice punt. Fair catch made by Terry Fair at the 37-yard line. Tennessee on offense for the first time in the second half in a moment. From Neyland Stadium, the volunteer torch bearer on the Tennessee campus. Let's go down to the man carrying the torch for us at the moment, Gus Johnson. All right, Sean, thank you very much. Standing here with the Southern legend, Archie Manning, the former great quarterback for Ole Miss and also the Saints, and he is the father of Peyton Manning. And my first question, did you ever think that your son would be as good as he is? No, I really didn't, Gus. I, I was excited. I think like all fathers across America when your son gets to play high school football and start and then when they told me he wanted to play college football and I, I was really excited when he got the opportunity but I, I had no idea he'd be able to come here and had to have the success he's had. Now a lot of pressure on your son uh, met with expectations and what do you tell them during the tough times like against Florida or against Memphis? Well just that you know he's been through it and he, you know it's it's like a yo-yo you know you're up and then you're down and that's football and, and, and Peyton's maintained a uh, kind of some stability through that whole thing. I've always just tried to tell my kids when they go out there to have fun. And I think sometimes you get too serious about it, you get too wrapped up, you forget that that's what football is supposed to be, especially at this level. And I will say this, I, I think he, he, he does have fun. He's, he's worked hard at it, but uh, their whole team, I think they go out with a good approach, and uh, we, we've been proud of them. Now, many people consider Peyton possibly the number one pick in the NFL draft uh, if he were to decide to turn pro. Do you think he's ready, and uh, will he do it? Well, I'd, I'd rather the, the experts tell him whether or not he's ready, and I think he'll listen to them on that. And then I think it's going to be a real tough decision for him. I really do. He, he has a great passion for college football and, and here from Tennessee, and he's really enjoyed it. And, but, you know, at some point, he, when the season's over, he's going to hear the other side of it and where he stands in, in, in pro ball. I know someday he wants to play there, so I think it'll be a real tough thing for him. I think it's a decision, though, just like where he went to college. He's got to make it, guys. Uh, we're, our family's going to be there for support, but it, it, he's got to make the decision, and I do think it'll be a tough one. And finally, speaking of family, you've got another one down in New Orleans right now that's pretty good as well. Well, Eli's my youngest. We're missing something good here. Oh, yeah, we did. Let's go back upstairs to Sean. <laughs> well, Dad is probably smiling downstairs as Peyton Manning goes deep to Peerless Price <laughs> for the touchdown. It's 34 to 10. 59 yards. Manning to Peerless Price. Second long touchdown reception for Price today. We just got talk, done talking about big plays, and there's another one. Busted coverage, cross motion, confused them. Price runs right down the seam. Touchdown, and you can't make it that easy for Peyton Manning. Three receptions, but for 143 yards and two touchdowns for Peerless Price, and the extra point is good by Jeff Hall. We'll have more from Archie Manning in a moment. It's all Tennessee here in Knoxville. And welcome back to Neyland Stadium. Peyton Manning throwing another touchdown to Peerless Price. And I'm standing here with his father, Archie Manning. And uh, before we, before your son rather threw the touchdown, we were talking about the other Manning that's uh, playing football right now in New Orleans. Well, my youngest son, Eli, I got to play this year as a sophomore. And, you know, that's, that's great experience for a youngster, 15 years old. 
kind of tall kid and skinny, and, and they threw the ball a good bit, so that, that's good experience. I, I worry about people expecting a little too much out of him, Gus, and thinking he's got to follow along with Peyton, but he doesn't. And he really does have fun playing football, and that, that's all I've really wanted. I, if my kids chose to play, I just want them to enjoy it. Well, Archie, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure, Gus. Okay, let's go back upstairs. Guys. On the kickoff, fair catch made by Tyrone Graham. And here's a look at the touchdown again, Manning to Price. Talk about Buster to Simons. Marcus Nash is going to come in motion and run up the field. Here is the touchdown maker, Price. He's going to go down the seam untouched because the safety jumps up on the wrong guy. Watch what happens. There comes the motion. Some confusion already. Nash goes up the sideline. Three guys run with him. Nobody with Peerless Price right down the hash mark. And he is aptly named today. Still Haskins at quarterback, although we saw Tim Couch warming up a moment ago. And Haskins is on the money. Curtis stayed on his feet after a pop from Jason Parker. And Isaac went down to the 32-yard line, very close to a first down. Interesting to hear the comments of Archie Manning. We've both been so impressed by Peyton when we've had the chance to visit with him. And everybody who knows him talks about what a wonderful young man he is, in addition to his outstanding football ability. And it's obvious that that comes from Archie and his wife Olivia and their family. Uh, they are a tremendous family. Archie was always known as a class act when he played. The apple does not far fall too far from the tree. off the head of Tyrone Hines and with that bounce might have turned it into a slight gain no gain on the play it'll be second and ten if you joined us late Kentucky took advantage of an interception scored first on a field goal then peerless price the first of his two long touchdown receptions Jay Graham's seven yard run made it 14 to three all of this in the first quarter still in the first quarter Norman Mason's catch made it 14 to 10 We'll continue the scoring summary in a moment. Second down and 10. Haley and Logan in the eye. Play action fake. Haskins trying to run away from pressure. Throws it up for grabs, and it's incomplete. He was fortunate it wasn't picked off. Raymond Austin, the nearest man. It was intended for Craig East. Jonathan Brown, the man pursuing Billy Jack Haskins from behind. Chester Ford's one-yard plunge made it 21 to 10. In the second quarter, Andy McCullough, 30 yard, 38 yard touchdown reception, made it 28 to 10. That was the score at the half. Then on the first possession of the second half for Tennessee, Peerless Price again, this time 59 yards. And the Volunteers appear to have it in the comfort zone right now. Just a little push, but when you're falling on those shoulders, remember the separated left shoulder of Haskins. It's been a long day for him. Kentucky just one out of nine on third down today. This is third and ten. Throw short, not a good pass. Intended for Curtis, too far ahead of him. I think Haskins thought that Curtis was going to be moving a bit more swiftly up the field as he threw that pass, and it's the second punt of the third quarter for Jimmy Carter. And seven punts now by Carter in this game. We told you earlier he set the school record for punts in a game with 13 against Florida earlier this year. Very fair waiting for it. He's the brother of Brian Fair, former standout basketball player at the University of Connecticut. Very fair from the 23. Had a seam. Ripping through it. And it's a 10-yard return. After a 46-yard punt. You will be good to go. <laughs> you will be good to go. And showing us moves we never knew he had. Yeah, I, I have a little problem understanding Pat O'Brien striking the pose mm -hmm. for the Heisman. That, that just doesn't fit for some reason. Well, David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator for Tennessee, told us yesterday Peyton Manning is the best college football player in America. He hands it off to Jay Graham, and it's a short gain of two out to the 35. Tackle made by Mark Jacobs and Bob Holmberg. Now, Sean, you bring up an interesting point. Cutcliffe, we talked a little bit about happy feet, and people have said Peyton Manning has happy feet, and I disagree heartily. I've watched a lot of tape of him. What it is is he chops his feet very often, but happy feet means you're trying to get away from a phantom rush, and I don't see that with him. Feet moving frequently to maintain good balance and position to throw. Another one of that throw. Joey Kent has a first down right at the 50-yard line. 
Watched him practice twice this week. And one thing you notice at all times, watch his feet. They're always moving. Chop, 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 chop. There's no happy feet there. Look at the gun right over Anthony Watson. Big time ability right there. Tannix looked like a young man who might have grown up with the benefit of a father who was a pretty good quarterback and might have taught him a thing or two in the backyard. I think Archie threw a few more interceptions, though. Yes, he did. Archie is on record as saying Peyton is already a much better quarterback than I was. Flag down, Graham down, close to a first down if the play stands. Thrown in the area in which you'd expect holding. Mark Jacobs and Jeff Snedeker combined on the stop on Graham. We have holding, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat the down. Well, here's a comparison you judge for yourself. The collegiate numbers of father and son. Now we got 40 over here, 20 over here. Sean, you went to Syracuse. Mm -hmm. What does that figure out the bit? 40 is not as good as 20. Okay. When it's next to INT. <laughs> and 50 is better than 31. But in fairness to the old man, he didn't have quite as good a supporting cast no. as Junior. Nor did he in the NFL, although Peyton might experience uh, what his dad did should he decide to come out next year and be the number one pick. Peyton says he'll make the decision at the end of the year. Dumped it off with a tight end, Dustin Moore. Moore still on his feet. They fall the play dead. With 102,000 in attendance, many didn't hear the whistles blowing. Now they boo and they realize the play's over. And this is the most emotion we've gotten out of this crowd all day. Let's see the big fella here, Dustin Moore. Weighed 230 when he came in. He's 262 now. Tight end. Let's see what happens. Tough to wrap your arms around the big fella when you can't even get your arms around them. He's still driving. He's still driving. He's still moving forward. I don't know, folks. I don't know if you can call that play over at that point. They blew it dead at the 48-yard line. Graham puts his head down. And out of bounds at the... 43-yard line goes Jay Graham, banged out by Van Hiles, but a tough run by the senior from Concord, North Carolina. And that's a good point right there. That's what David Cutcliffe said yesterday. We're not physical enough. We've become passive because we're a pass offense. We need to move some offensive linemen around, get them physical, run some people over, and I think that's what you're going to see this second half is Tennessee trying to reestablish the physicality of their football team. David Cutcliffe is in that booth. <laughs> Somewhere in there, folks. Either that or in the witness protection program, one or the other. <laughs> third down and four. They're five out of six on third down today. Uh, the Volunteers, they lead 35-10 in the third quarter. The pass caught. Marcus Nash has the first down at the 35. That had to be a perfect throw, or it might have been a run the other way for a touchdown. And War Stewart made the tackle. Yeah, Anwar Stewart had pretty good coverage here, made a play on the ball. Not bad for a linebacker covering a slot back right there, makes the play, doesn't get it, and Marcus Nash, who has been criticized before for a lack of concentration, does an excellent job holding on to the football there. From the 35. Dang too far. Throwing off his back foot with the pressure coming. He was looking for Marcus Nash. Lately, the Tennessee offense has had it on a roll. Last seven possessions, scored five touchdowns, turned it over once on downs, and the half. Who's that half guy? Ended the last possession of the first half. They ran out of time. Jay Graham alone back on second and ten. Nine minutes remaining, third quarter, 35 to 10. Tennessee. Graham, great move. He will score. He faked Lehman Boyd right out of his shoes, and then it was over. 35 yards and a touchdown. Great run by Graham, great blocking, but Manning changes the play at the line of scrimmage, goes away from the corner blitz. 
They got him out, manned on the front side. Boyd misses the tackle. That's exactly what David Cutcliffe wanted this game. Jeff Hall kicks the extra point. They've been waiting most of the year for the running game to return. Perhaps it has today as Graham has 75 yards on eight carries. And this score his second today. Jeff Hall's kickoff is in the air. Theo Sand ran up and fielded at the 30. They might have wanted to try another fair catch there. They drove him back <laughs> to the 22. We'll see where they mark it. Now, in that last touchdown, back up tight end, John Sartell's got a tough block. He's got a hook, Snedeker, 48. Watch what he does. It's really an excellent job by Sartell. Gets the hook, and that leaves the corner wide open, and now in the open field, great move. Runs away from Lehman Boyd, and it's a touchdown. Tennessee up to 456 yards of total offense. Logan, another loss. Run down by Ron Green. Well, 67's been the magic number today for Tennessee. The last touchdown drive of 67 yards. The third scoring drive for the balls that has covered that distance in today's game. 35-yard touchdown run by Jay Graham. Apparently, some folks here confident the uh, outcome is no longer in doubt at 42 to 10. Some empty seats. And a crowd of 102,530. Interception. Bad throw by Haskins. Austin makes him pay the ultimate price. <laughs> 26 yards on the return. Third interception of the year for Austin. The senior from Lawton, Oklahoma, and the route is on. It's 48 to 10. Jeff Hall picks his seventh extra point of the ball game. And it's 49-10, Tennessee, with 8.03 left in the third quarter. Well, Raymond Austin's a senior. He's a veteran. Look at 28. Reads the eyes of the quarterback in the blitz situation the whole way. Dances into the end zone. Really a simple, great job by Austin. Reads it once again. Cuts in front of the intended receiver, Yeast. To walk into the end zone at this point. Raymond Austin with former safety, playing corner. Really an unselfish football player for this team this year. Now let's see what kind of hit we get on Haskins here. Wow, number 92, Coleman. Excuse me, that's 22, Corey Turry. Mike, there's no reason for Haskins to still be in this game. They're down 39 points. He has a very painful left shoulder. We've seen evidence of that. There's another slam out of that shoulder. There's no reason to subject him to any more. No, I think Timmy Couch is your guy at the next series. I agree with that. Certainly Haskins would want to continue being the competitor that he is, but comes a time when the coach has to say that's enough. Hall to Harold Dennis. Flag down. Dennis still on his feet, and he's out to the 36-yard line. Looked like somebody grabbed his face mask as he was approaching the 20-yard line. Five-yard face mask during the run. Tacked on to the end of the run. First down. Looked like Fred White grabbed the face mask of Harold Dennis. Well, Haskins is still in the game. Wow. He's taken a beating today. He has not officially been sacked, but, I mean, look at him. He's been hurried three times. The key, he's been knocked down eight times. High formation. Good fake. Haskins takes another hit. 
Corey Terry and Tyrone Hines making the play. Wow. Hey, Tyrone Hines looks like a guided missile on this play. Haskins fortunate enough to cut inside him. Nothing open. Wow. He, I mean, I give him all the credit in the world. He's a tough kid. But, Sean, well, I don't want to rip Bill Curry on his way out the door. He's one of the true gentlemen in college football. But he's down by 39. Very unlikely to come back against the heavily favored number nine team in the country. Playing a quarterback who has a separated left shoulder for the freshman quarterback on the bench who could use some experience. And this could seem, for a number of reasons, to be a good time to put Pikes in the game. The center had to fall on the ball. Jason Watts is another good reason. Mm -hmm. There's Couch on the sideline. He's been warming up from time to time. It's still Haskins with 6.50 left in the third quarter. Wearing a chain around his neck. You don't see that too often. Most of the time, the trainers or people tell you to take that off because if somebody ever grabs you around the neck and gets a hold of that chain, you could leave a pretty bad mark around that neck. Third down and 11. And they better hurry to get this play off. Three seconds on the play clock. They're not going to get it off. Clock's at zero, as you see. And here comes the flag, finally. Sean, I think he's in a little bit of a different world right now. Last play, the snap from center. This play had no idea that the, the clock was going down like that. As they walk off the penalty, we check in with Gus Johnson. All right, Sean, before the game, I had an opportunity to talk to backup quarterback Tim Couch, and we know that he was an All-American quarterback coming out of high school and elected to come to Kentucky, and I asked him about his future at Kentucky, and he honestly and candidly told me that he still has some decisions to make. He's not comfortable with the situation right now, and he's going to finish out this season, play spring ball, and then make a decision. And not being in the football game right now when his team is down 49 to 10 could add more fuel to his fire. Guys, and Haskins takes another hit. This one delivered by Bill Duff, the junior from Delrin, New Jersey, with his first sack of the year back at the 27-yard line. An overachieving defensive tackle. Here's Duff right here. Watch the pressure on the quarterback. He was named the most improved defensive player in spring ball. A little swim technique, and now he's going to accelerate to the football. And there goes that shoulder again. Bang. And Ron Green injured on the play. See him there in the right side of your screen, grabbing at his left knee. Green's a sophomore from Severna Park, Maryland. Robin York. Robin York. Now, Sean, Gus brings up a pretty interesting point on the whole Tim Couch thing. When does he make a decision? Who becomes the new Kentucky coach? We'll, mm -hmm. we'll play a lot. Rick Pitino had a little chat with him a couple of weeks ago, and I think the message from all these people, Pitino, Curry, all the people involved in Kentucky have been be patient. Don't make a knee-jerk reaction. Sit back, evaluate the new staff, and then decide what you want to do. And Couch has said that he would do that. He would meet with the new coaching staff. Obviously, he'd have a preference for a passing coach, and that seems to be what they're looking at. There was a list of four candidates for the job printed in the local papers in Lexington and Knoxville yesterday. Those four names were Mike Gottfried, whom Danny Sheridan reported here on CBS earlier, is likely to be offered the job. David Cutcliffe, who is the offensive coordinator here at Tennessee, certainly with an impressive passing background, as has Mike Gottfried. Al Mummy, who's a coach at Division II Power Valdosta State, and he's known as a passing coach, and Larry Curtsy, a former Kentucky assistant, now an assistant with the San Francisco 49ers. And as they discussed at halftime of college football today, Howard Schnellenberger's name has been mentioned as well. Great punt by Carter. He's getting better with plenty of practice this afternoon. Bear had to run back inside the 20 to field it, and he brought it back to the 26-yard line. Beginning Thanksgiving Day, continuing Friday in primetime, CBS Sports presents Ice Wars, the USA versus the World. Team USA is trying to defend its title, led by Brian Boitano, Jill Trenary, and Scott Hamilton. The World Team features Katarina Witt, Victor Petrenko, and Kurt Browning. More skating stars, Thanksgiving Day at 2.30 Eastern time, it all begins. Now let's go back to what you just talked about. You highlighted all the logical candidates. And with David Cutcliffe, let's not forget that he recruited Couch a year ago heavily, and they have a tremendous relationship. All kinds of wild rumors circulating. 
Gesture for the ball carrier. Peyton Manning is out of the game. Jermaine Copeland likely be the number one quarterback in spring practice if Manning leaves for the NFL. Has taken his place. Jermaine, the number two quarterback this year. There's even been a rumor if Manning leaves, that might contribute more to Couch thinking about transferring to Tennessee. I mean, it's just the domino unbelievable. Effect. Yep. All the speculation and all it is is rumor. Brian Darden now in a tailback, going three and four deep at some positions. Tennessee on offense. This is the dimension Copeland brings. An outstanding ability to rush the football. He gives the stiff arm <laughs> to Van Hiles and has a first down near midfield. <laughs> you called it exactly right. A completely different dimension. They couldn't run that play in eight years with Peyton Manning. But as soon as he comes in the game, option football. Fake to the fullback, not a true triple option. Good block by the fullback. Look at the cutback. The dexterity, Copeland, shake and bake, now watch to the straight arm. Get off me. Good job by Van Hiles on the tackle, but Copeland's exciting. Guys in the same. Darden and Ford. This is Darden. He's a true freshman from Vicksburg, Mississippi. Pushed out of bounds with the 41 of Kentucky, close to another first down. Van Hiles pushed him out. Well, if you joined us late, this was a competitive game in the first quarter, thanks in large part to turnovers committed by Tennessee. Kentucky took advantage. But since the first quarter, Kentucky's had two wow. yards of total offense. <laughs> Just to go back to the coaching situation for a moment, I spoke with C.M. Newton, the athletic director at Kentucky, yesterday on the telephone. He said... He had submitted a list of candidates to the committee set up by the university president. That list had been shortened, but there is no timetable on naming a successor. The president and CM Newton will have the final say. Eric Lane, the receiver, out of bounds after a short gain at the 39-yard line. Anwar Stewart made the tackle. And the interesting thing through all of this is that Bill Curry and his staff have been fired for a month, but they're still out there recruiting for the University of Kentucky. They've been telling young men who are in high school or junior college, Kentucky's a great place. Keep Kentucky in mind and then evaluate it when the new staff is in place. Very awkward position, both for the coaching staff and for the kids they're recruiting. Second and eight. Open over the middle to John Sartell, the tight end who had to be talked into coming back for his fifth year. And he's been a significant contributor. Bill Curry, as we mentioned earlier, a great sportsman. Loved by his players wherever he has been. 17-year coaching career as a head coach at Georgia Tech, Alabama, in the last seven years at Kentucky. Only one bowl game at Kentucky. That was in 93, the only non-losing season. He has not had a winning season in seven at Kentucky. In 93, they were 6-6 six and six when they lost in the Peach Bowl. And he was very honest about it. He said, I've had every kind of fair chance here, and the record just has not been good enough. Time out, Kentucky. Sean McDonough with Mike Mayock and Gus Johnson. Back at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee. Well, those lucky young fans. Autographed helmets in the front row seat. Front row, Philip Fulmer, same place, both helmets. Not bad. Looks like a little uh, Irish star or something there in the corner. Did you see that one? Mm -hmm. Hard to believe the report we heard at halftime about Tennessee, perhaps Philip Fulmer, considering replacing assistant coaches. Now, if that's the reaction to losing two games, they're going to be eight and two when this game is over. Philip Fulmer with this win, should this score stand, will be 41 and nine. Most places they give the staff a contract <laughs> extension, a raise, they might have a parade. Here, that gets you fired. But if, you know, we've got to talk a little. This is kind of an interesting discussion. We were in Auburn last week. Terry Bowden starts out 20 and 0 there, but going into last week's game with Georgia, he's 7 and 2. And here in the Boober, same mm -hmm. thing with this gentleman. After they lost to Memphis, I was in the Avis truck going to the uh, airport from the rental drop-off, and there were about 15 Tennessee fans, and all they could talk about was why can't they fire this guy, Phil Homer? He's lost twice this year. Do you have an endorsement deal with a well Tech company we don't know about? There's a first down. Good fake by Copeland to the end zone, and it is incomplete.
Free safety gets caught inside on the play action fake, but Littleton Ward does a good job recovering late, makes the play on the football, and then they have the fight in the end zone. Good job by Littleton Ward. He's looking for Troy Pratt, the senior from Lafayette, Louisiana, who's very deep on the depth chart. He's only had one catch this year. But a senior in his final home game getting a chance to play by Philip Pullman. Moving along the line, there is a flag down. Pullman! See ya. Touchdown! Flag at the line of scrimmage. There was movement. Here, both sides were moving. Offside. Defense, penalty is declined. Play stands. Apparently no movement along the Tennessee offensive line. It's a 30-yard touchdown run by Jermaine Copeland. His first rushing touch, second rushing touchdown, rather, of the season. You know, the defensive linemen definitely move, but let's see if the tight end jumps also. See, they both move. Yeah, I thought so, live. Sartell jumped when the defensive linemen jumped. Remember we had that double call earlier today? Mm -hmm. That looked a little bit more appropriate there. But a heck of a run, nonetheless. And an injury on the play to Robert Poole. Tennessee offensive lineman down on the field. Jermaine Copeland, sophomore from Harriman, Tennessee. Just what they can't afford right now is another offensive line injury. The only returning starter, Jarvis Rito, went down against Florida earlier this year. Poole has played right guard. He's played left tackle. And Poole's being helped off. So it is 55 to 10. Drive covered 74 yards. And Tennessee now up to 528 yards of offense, the most they've had in a game this season. Jeff Hall adds the extra point. 2.41 remaining third quarter. Tennessee 56 and Kentucky 10. Mike, do you think every one of those cheerleaders did the uh, required <laughs> the number rec of push-ups? I don't think the requisite number of push-ups was met there. Mm. Can't say that I would blame them. <laughs> this would be a little arm and chest weary as Tennessee has piled up 56 points. The last drive, 74 yards. Copeland showing his dimension as a runner, but a lot of times when you see a quarterback with his kind of running ability, you think, well, he's a running quarterback, and the coaches tell us, don't be fooled, he can also really throw. And the interesting thing is, it, yes, it is his job going into spring if Peyton leaves, but they've got another guy named T. Martin, a true freshman, who they tell me is a big-time college quarterback. So there's going to be a real battle if Peyton leaves. Jeff Hall kicking off from the 50. There was a penalty against Kentucky. After the touchdown. And Hall booms it out of the back of the end zone. Let's check in with Gus Johnson. He's with Kentucky Athletic Director C.M. Newton. Gus? And thank you very much, Sean. And uh, Mr. Newton, uh, obviously, Bill Curry getting ready to depart as the head coach at Kentucky. You guys are in the process of looking for a new head coach. Can you give me an idea of what kind of coach you want to bring in to this system? We want someone that has the values and the commitment to education and to the welfare of the student athlete and the other great values that Bill Curry has. Uh, and someone that can, can get the job done. And could you tell me how far along in this process uh, are you right now, and uh, when do you think you'll be able to name a new head coach? Yes, we're pretty far along, uh, but it'll be, I don't know, within the next two or three weeks, hopefully, uh, before, uh, it'll be definitely before Christmas, but we're, we're pretty far along in the process. And in asking how far along you are in the process, uh, can you give me an idea of the number of candidates that are remaining? No. 
uh, in the Atlanta paper uh, earlier this week, uh, an article came out, an article surfaced that Mike Gottfried, the uh, ESPN analyst, had already uh, racked up the job. Can you give us a, a comment on, on that article in the Atlanta That's paper? That's another totally inaccurate article. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us, and uh, good luck. Okay, let's go back to Sean. And it was a good try by Gus, and I made the same attempt yesterday on the telephone with CM, and he was nice enough to return the phone call, but they are very tight-lipped about the identity of the candidates. <laughs> you can understand why that might be the case. Eric Westmoreland just made the tackle on Derek Logan. On that last touchdown, Jeff Tanner was ejected from the game for Kentucky. He was the reason for the 15-yard personal foul penalty assessed on the kickoff, and he was ejected for his unsportsmanlike behavior. Tim Couch, as you can see, is in the game, mercifully. Finally, Billy Jack Haskins removed. Couch hit as he threw, and the pass is too long. Looking for Norman Mason. Corey Gaines had the coverage. And the struggles on offense, and that is a kind word, continue for Kentucky. Well, kind of an interesting interview there. CM didn't give up a whole lot more to Gus than you had talked to him on the phone yesterday. Kind of a tough interview for our colleague there. Well, huh? all you can do is ask. <laughs> That's exactly right. CM Newton is a good man and has his reasons for keeping the names of the candidates secretive. We will say this. There have been no denials about any of those names that we mentioned earlier from anybody connected with Kentucky. Fair. There is a late flag down. They have Schellenberger down, running under punts, even with a severely sprained ankle, so much so that minutes before game time, it was questionable if he'd even play. Have hey, to admire his toughness. I have no question about two things with him, his toughness and his intelligence. He's an all-SEC academic pick, second-team All-American academic. I mean, this, this guy is one of those guys, someday down the road, if you've got to get operated on, I want him operating on me. Mm -hmm. We have holding during the run back on the receiving team, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, and first down. Remember now, he's got a real bad leg, bad ankle. Watch him accelerate and make the tackle on Terry Fair, who's one of the quickest guys in the country. One-on-one -on -one tackle in the open field. It really shows you something about Mike Schellenberger. Schellenberger just named one of 24 national scholar athletes as named by the CFA among CFA member institutions nice pass Copeland and McCullough first down out near midfield <laughs> I think if uh, Peyton takes a trip to the NFL they're in fairly good hands here good read too deep coverage he hit it in between the corner and the safety that's a good solid job by uh, Slash Jr. Geo Wilson made the tackle on McCullough an 18 yard gain First and ten. Final minute of the third quarter. Tennessee leads 56 to 10. Derek Edmonds listed at fifth string at the tailback spot at the start of the day. Seeing action now for Tennessee. He's a true freshman from Tampa out of Hillsboro High School. Kurt Soupy, Jeff Snedeker combining on the stop. Sean, you used the term earlier today, embarrassment of riches, when you were talking about the wide receiver position. It's the same thing at tailback. Mm -hmm. Offensively, they are loaded at those positions. And it looks that way at quarterback, too, with the performance of Copeland. And you mentioned T. Martin He's sitting out. Edmonds again, wrapped up by Anwar Stewart. And that'll end the third quarter. With the score, Tennessee 56 and Kentucky 10. We'll return to Neyland Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. A couple of weeks ago, Tennessee upset by Memphis in a major upset. The volunteers determined to make sure it did not happen again today. You see the missing K on the right side of the Kentucky helmets. That's as a tribute to Coach Curry. That dates back to the first game after he was fired. Players decided they needed some sort of demonstration of their loyalty and affection to their head coach. So when they came out to play Georgia, 
They removed one of the K decals from the side of the helmet. Saying, we're taking our coach away, we're taking the K away. They put the Ks back on after the game. They practice all week with the K. They come out for the pregame warm-up with the K on, and then they go back into the dressing room, and right before the opening kickoff, they remove the K. It's kind of a neat story. Van Hiles, the defensive captain, got together with the offensive captain, Haskins, and that's what they came up with. Fourth and short. And Copeland picks up the first down. Great surge forward by the offensive line. When the announcement was made by Sam Newton that Coach Curry would not be back for an eighth year at Kentucky, the Wildcats were one and six. And Coach Curry said that start was inexcusable. Since then, they've won all three games prior to today. And they've improved in every statistical category. On first and ten, Derek Edmonds knocked down by Andre Smith. And here's Pat O'Brien. All right, Sean, Virginia Tech quarterback Jim Druckermiller threw two touchdown passes, including this 35-yarder in today's 31-14 win over West Virginia. Tech 19-1 in its last 20 games. Host Virginia on Friday at 2.30 Eastern on CBS, determining the bragging rights in the old Dominion State. We're going to put a couple of CBS decals on you guys' helmets. How about that? <laughs> We'd be happy to have them. I'm only wearing it on one side of my head, though. Well, I, could, I have plenty of room for several. <laughs> Might help cover up some bare spots up above. Well, we talked about the deep Tennessee team. Nine different players have caught a pass today for Tennessee, and ten different players have carried the football in a rush. There's an injured player for Kentucky. We have not yet been able to identify him. It is Gordon Crow, a backup defensive tackle, a true freshman from Lancaster. Kentucky and you know Crow backs up Tanner who just got ejected from the game mm -hmm. so they are now bereft at the one inside tackle position they are what I think they're bereft <laughs> <laughs> they're bereft with very few they sure are and that's what's happened to the Kentucky offense. Three yards in the second quarter, minus two in the third. They've had one yard of offense since the first quarter. Esther Ford couldn't get away from the tackle of Bob Holmberg. A walk-on now on scholarship. Well, this will be a disappointing outcome to the football game, but it's been an exciting weekend in the Curry household. Coach Curry's son, Bill Curry Jr., who was a graduate assistant on the Kentucky coaching staff, ran off and eloped How about this that? weekend. I mean, Last night, <laughs> Gatlinburg, Tennessee, about 40 miles from here, resort location. I just he married his uh, longtime girlfriend, Kelly Caster. And they knew that that event might be taking place. Nice catch made by Eric Diago, a true freshman. He's the third string tight end. It's his first catch of the year. So another different receiver, the 10th for Tennessee. Coach Curry and his wife, Carolyn. There's Carolyn Curry on the left, and there is Bill Curry Jr.'s new bride. I just want to know if, if Bill shirked any responsibilities last night as a graduate assistant for this football program. Mm. What do you think? If he did, I'd say it was, a, it was time well spent. <laughs> <laughs> First and ten at the 17-yard line. Derek Edmonds down to the 15-yard line. Ticking down to 12 minutes remaining. It's a 46-point lead for Tennessee at 56 to 10. It's just the kind of game Phil Fulmer wanted today. They're physical. They're running the football. They got Manning out of it without any injuries. It's exactly what they needed. And this keeps them in position. Right now, it looks like they're slotted for the Citrus Bowl. And they needed a win to stay on track for that one. With this win, they'll go to 8 2, the game at Vanderbilt next weekend, remaining in the regular season. Copeland, a couple of shake and bake moves. He got down to the 10 yard line. Tackled by Bob Holmberg. Here's the SEC picture. Concerning 
bowl games. The number one team, which will be Florida and the Bowl Alliance. Then number two out of the SEC, the Citrus Bowl. And right now, that's where Tennessee appears to be heading. Outback Bowl, Peach Bowl, Independence Bowl, all with tie-ins to the SEC. And also, the Alliance Bowl could pick a second SEC team, especially if somebody like Alabama could upset Florida in the championship game. Big Auburn Alabama game is this evening. Snedeker and Holmberg combining on the stop on Copeland. It'll be fourth down and short inside the 10. They're going to spot the ball down to the nine yard line, fourth and two. Crowd wants Philip Fulmer to go for it. And it appears they will. You know, 56 to 10 with with 10 minutes left. It, it's an interesting call here. I'm not sure you need to go for it on fourth and two in this situation. But as we saw in Monday Night Football, kicking a field goal can sometimes be running it up to. At least he can be taken that way. Oakland's going to change the play. Two seconds on the play clock. One. And he got it off. It was just barely. And it is looped to the end zone. Incomplete. Oh. Looking for Benji Schuler, the younger brother of former Tennessee quarterback Heath Schuler. And apparently didn't have him in his possession when he was still in the end zone. And now it comes up limping. He was juggling the ball a little bit. I think they're going to end up ruling that some part of his body was out of bounds while he was still juggling the football. But give Copeland some credit here for changing the call at the line of scrimmage, just getting the ball snapped in time. And let's see the effort by Schuler. Tight coverage by Hiles. Schuler elevates. Drop it. Still in the air. It's still in the air. His shoulder is out. That is a good call. He's out of bounds. Schuler makes a great effort. But look, the ball's still going when the shoulder touches it out of bounds. Clearly out. Derek Logan runs into traffic. And that's the same play over and over again since the first quarter. They just haven't been able to find any running room for Logan. Well, I guess when you're under pressure to perhaps replace assistant coaches, 56 <laughs> to 10 isn't a big enough win. You throw it in the end zone. I agree with you. Maybe uh, you go for it, but I'm not sure you have to throw it in the end zone either. Uh, and, and that was Copeland taking it upon himself on the pre-snap read to say, mm -hmm. wait a minute, I'm coached. Right. That if they're in this, I've got to check to that. Mm -hmm. See, you, can't get, you can't say they were trying to throw the ball there. Yep. Uh, but still, I don't know. Well, there weren't many options available to Phil Fullman. Couch throws on the run incomplete. Corey Terry knocked down Couch. Oh boy. Couch hurt on the play. And many of the people here cheer. And you've got to have something wrong with you to come out to a stadium and cheer when somebody who's playing at a college football game gets hurt. Corey Terry chasing him down. He's going to finish the playoff. Left arm, left shoulder. I don't know. I think that hardwood's looking pretty good to the uh, All American basketball player, Tim Couch. Well, in addition to setting the national record for passing yards in a high school career with over 12,000, and that's what Couch did at Leslie County High School, he also led the state of Kentucky in scoring in basketball his junior year in high school. Averaged 36 points per game. Logan thrown for a loss. Buck Buxton knocked down Logan. There is a flag on the play. Back in the end zone, here's Pat O'Brien. All right, Sean, Syracuse, winners of eight in a row after today's 36-15 road win over Temple before just 4,312 fans at the vet. Keith Downing scores on a fake field goal versus the Owls. Syracuse, by the way, could wrap up the Big East Championship and an Alliance Bowl berth with a win over the Hurricanes on CBS next Saturday. Back to you. Hey, 4,000 fans, Sean. 4,000 fans is a lot at the vet. That's... Uh... A pretty good crowd for <laughs> Temple. Interesting, they rewarded uh, Coach Dickerson with two more years on his contract earlier in the week. And that's a program that really needs to get it going. It kind of drags down the Big East. Every head coach we've talked to in the Big East said it's brutal to go into Temple, veteran stadium, and play in front of two or 3,000 people in a 60,000-seat stadium. Penalty on the last play for roughing Couch. Now it's Logan up the middle. And let's check in with our friend and colleague, Gus Johnson. Gus? 
And thank you, Sean. I'm standing here with Dr. Carolyn Curry, the uh, wife of Bill Curry, and uh, it's real, been real tough on, on, on Bill and probably your family uh, since the announcement in October that he would not be here at the uh, University of Kentucky. How has the family dealt with it, and in particular, how is he? Uh, well, he's doing very well. We're a close-knit family, and this has been a team effort. Uh, we're all a very much a part of the university and very interested in academics. And I'm proud of Bill Curry because he loves these players. He's done everything by the rules, and he's given 110%. I'm sad that this is happening in college football because it's what college football is supposed to be about, the student athlete. I'm really proud of Bill. I'm proud of our players. And I will miss uh, college football, and we have loved the people of Kentucky, and they've loved us. But I'm, I'm very concerned about the message this is sending about college athletics. Uh, he made a comment that once this was all over, he wanted to get in the car and, and get on the road with the beautiful bride that uh, he's been with, the person that he's known since the fifth grade, and that's you, and he's looking forward to that. Yes, we own some property in uh, North Carolina, and we're going to build a house on the mountain, and we're going to watch the sunrise and the sunset and take a breather and decide what we're going to do from now on. But it will be something exciting. This is just a bend in the road for us. And is coaching still in the future for the Curry family? Well, we're not closing any doors. We know that there's some exciting things out there. Bill will have a lot of opportunities. There have already been some people who have approached him about various things. Now, on a lighter side, uh, you gained a daughter-in-law last night. Yes, well, we added some joy to this weekend. Billy and Kelly have been talking about this for a long time, and they decided to elope and save some money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much for joining us, and good luck. Let's go back to Sean. Thank you very much. Quite a weekend for the Curry family. Bill Jr. gets married on the weekend when Bill Sr. will leave the coaching ranks, at least for the time being. Sean McDonough with Mike Mayock and Gus Johnson back in Knoxville, Tennessee. Volunteers about to make it 12 wins in 12 years in this rivalry, the battle for the beer barrel. Now, true freshman Team Martin is in as the third quarterback of the game for Tennessee hands off to Brian Darden, and Darden gets driven back. Interesting to hear the comments of Carolyn Curry as we take a look at Team Martin. He's only thrown two passes this year, one of them complete, 11 yards against UNLV. He's from Mobile, Alabama, 6'3, 215. When we heard from C.M. Newton, Gus asked him the qualities he was looking for a new coach. Most of what he said pertained to Bill Curry. Yep. Wants somebody, a man of integrity, plays by the rules, who cares about academics. Kentucky, four of the last six years, has had more players on the academic honor roll in the SEC for football than any other team in the league. Darden cuts back. But, as Bill Curry said, and he knows what his business is about, too, we didn't win enough football games, 26 and 51. Unfortunately, the unfortunate reality of the coaching business is that ultimately you're going to be judged on wins and losses and not how many people you graduate. And that's exactly what Carolyn Kirby, excuse me, Carolyn Curry was alluding to, that they're losing someone that genuinely cares about the kids and called them student athletes. Mm -hmm. And she truly feels that as her husband does also. Team Martin. Leaves over would be tackler, has a first down. So perhaps the battle for the number one quarterback job <laughs> next spring has already begun. Should Peyton Manning leave, it'll be T. Martin and Jermaine Copeland. Copeland was impressive at quarterback today, and now it's Martin displaying his talents. I had a couple of people tell me this week that if Tim Couch elected to transfer to Tennessee, this young man right here, T. Martin, would give him every bit of a battle ultimately for the starting job down the road. They're out to the 49-yard line. 604 yards of total offense now for the Vols. Most since 1994 when they had 665 against Vanderbilt. Ooh, minute left. Happy Valley, 29 all. Mm, that's pretty interesting because if Penn State lo loses, that's their third loss probably knocks them out of the Alliance Bowl and gives Tennessee a much better shot at it. I didn't think Michigan State could go into Happy Valley and do that, Sean. They're playing well. Definitely a rapidly improving program under Nick Saban. The yep. question is, will he stay? <laughs> His name's been mentioned for NFL vacancies. Martin with a lot of running room along the far sideline. He's finally pushed out by Lehman Boyd. A lot of the first team defenders still on the field. There is a flag down on the play. 
Now, Martin looked good and had a nice run there, showing his athleticism, but he should have thrown the football. Had his tight end wide open. He'll learn. That's a freshman just being excited. We have holding against the offense during the run. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul and repeat the down. This is the last game for Tennessee seniors, the last game for Bill Curry, also the last game for Kentucky seniors, including Harold Dennis, about as courageous a young man as you'll find in any sport anywhere. Some of you may know the story back in May of 1988. Harold was with his junior high church group returning to Kentucky from an amusement park in Cincinnati. And the school bus was hit by a drunk driver driving the wrong way on an interstate. The bus caught on fire. 27 youngsters lost their life. Harold Dennis lost his best friend who was sitting in the seat right next to him. Harold himself severely burned over his face, his neck and shoulders. But he lived. Was a soccer player in high school. Went out for this football team at high school as a senior as the kicker. Took a soccer scholarship to Louisville. Played one year, but he still had the football bug. Walked on at Kentucky in 94 as a kicker. Wasn't good enough to make it as a kicker, but Coach Curry saw that he had great agility in some drills. Made him into a wide receiver. As we've seen today, he sees playing time as a wide receiver and as a kick returner. Got into his first game at Kentucky two years ago here at Tennessee. And what an uplifting story his is. One of great courage and perseverance. Harold Dennis playing his last game at Kentucky today. In the Kentucky media guide, they ask, could you give any advice to youngsters? And very simply, he said, attitude is the key to success. Mm -hmm. Darden in trouble in the backfield. Out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Close to a first down, Keo Wilson chased him out. Well, the celebration has already begun on the Tennessee sideline. With 3-10 remaining, the Vols lead 56-10. to <laughs> Hey, it's not that cold out, fellas. Take the jacket off. <laughs> John Schlarman icing his ankle on the Kentucky sideline. And it must take a lot to get him to put an ice bag on. Bill Curry said, in all my years of playing and coaching, yep. Schlarman is the toughest guy I've ever known in football. And you think about that, he was drafted by the Green Bay Packers under Vince Lombardi. So he played for Lombardi, Fuzzy Thurston, Jerry Kramer, Ray Nitschke, all those guys. Then he played for Don Shula, and he came back and said, the toughest guy I've ever been around is a guy named John Schlarman. Penn State has taken the lead. 12 seconds left by three over Michigan State. Ooh, big hit delivered. It was Keo Wilson putting the pop on Owen Sullinger. Well, it won't be today. The last time Kentucky beat Tennessee was November 24th of 1984. 17 12 the final give you an idea how long ago that was 11 Tennessee wins since wow. Terry Claiborne was the coach <laughs> Dallas the number one TV show on CBS we might add and BYU number one football team. yeah I remember them beating DC at the Meadowlands in the uh, opening kickoff class Wow. quarterback young guy by the name of Steve Young that's the year I graduated from college too that really makes it seem <laughs> a long time ago to me 225 left. So Philip Fulmer and his volunteers will head to Nashville for a game with the Vanderbilt to wrap up the regular season. And they'll wait for the bowl picture to sort itself out. Could be a return trip for the Citrus Bowl. <laughs> Ronnie Pillow is at fullback and he takes the handoff. He's spent a lot of time the last couple of years bouncing back and forth between Offense and defense for the first half of this year. He was a linebacker. 
Just before the Memphis game, they moved him back to offense. Yeah, he, he he's parent. The coaches said he feels like he's been on some kind of uh, merry-go-round. One week he's a fullback, the next week he's back at linebacker. They said ultimately, though, they think he's going to be the starting fullback down the road. Fourth down and four. Minute and a half remaining. Option. Edmonds the pitch. He is stopped for a loss. And Kentucky takes over on downs. A minute 20 remaining. Back to Knoxville in a moment. Back in Knoxville where Andre Smith was shaken up on the last play. He's a junior from Decatur, Georgia. And it is a final score. Penn State with that late field goal defeats Michigan State 32 to 29. Possibly could be about a seven million dollar win. Yeah. Divided among the Big Ten schools. Well, you know, it was an interesting point that people were making about that game. Michigan State served to gain financially by losing today. Because if Penn State won and went to an Alliance Bowl, That's an $8 right. million dollar bowl game, the money gets split up in the Big Ten. Right. Michigan State gets a piece of that. If they knock Penn State out of the yeah, they Alliance get, Bowl, <laughs> they get one eleventh of seven or eight million instead of one eleventh of what the Citrus Bowl pays mm. or one of the other ones. Just one of the oddities of the system. <laughs> Michigan State obviously went there and gave it all they're there. all and came up just a little bit short. Minute 20 left in the last game as coach at Kentucky for Bill Curry and his staff. Tim Couch still a quarterback. And that throw much too high. We check in with Pat O'Brien in New York. All right, Sean, Penn State held off a pesky Michigan State team 32-29 today as senior Brett Conway kicked a 30-yard field goal with 16 ticks on the clock. Nittany Lions at 10-2 stay alive for the Lions' bowl berth. This was the regular season finale for Joe Paterno and both teams. Back to you. They seem a pretty good bet now for the Lions' bowl berth. Yeah, I think Notre Dame and Penn State are two schools anybody would love to have. Eric Logan, first time he's been able to break free since the first quarter. Corey Gaines brought him down. First down is Logan gained out to the 42. How about the story David Cutcliffe told us about the competitiveness of Peyton Manning yesterday? Brandon Stewart, another one of the quarterbacks competing for a starting job when Peyton, they were both true freshmen. He has since left. One night, Manning comes in, locks them out from a quarterback meeting, so Stort can't get in, and it appears that he's late. It's just part of the competitive fire of Peyton Manning. Locked every door in the football complex. <laughs> 45 seconds left. Here's our lineup next Friday, after you'll be well-fed on Thanksgiving Day. We have LSU Arkansas. Most of you will see Virginia versus Virginia Tech. Battle for Virginia from Blacksburg. And I agree wholeheartedly with what you said earlier. Virginia Tech should be a lot better in the rankings than they are. Only one loss at Syracuse to an outstanding Syracuse team. Beat West Virginia today. They were number 17. They've got to jump up in the rankings. Yep, they should be ahead of some of these teams with two losses that are ahead of them. Couch, again too high. Intended for Quentin McCord, a fellow true freshman. Welcome home to America's Night of Television on CBS Tonight. Don't miss all new episodes of Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, Early Edition, and Walker, Texas Ranger. There are nine teams ahead of Virginia Tech with two losses. And Virginia Tech is now 9-1. and one. The Hokies rank number 17 before today's convincing win over West Virginia. Very good West Virginia team. seconds left. Couch. Complete to Isaac Curtis. And they'll let the clock run out. Even though it was a first down, they should have stopped it to move the chains for a moment. Officials elected not to do that, and the beer barrel remains in the hands of the Tennessee Volunteers. It'll stay here in Knoxville for the 12th straight year. And Peyton Manning with a word for perhaps one of the next great quarterbacks in college football, Tim Couch. And let's go to Gus Johnson with Coach Curry. Gus. Well, Coach Curry, your final game as the head coach at Kentucky. What's going on through your mind right now? Well, um, 
numb, I suppose, would be the best description. Um, it's been a great ride. Certainly learned a lot of things, and most recently, humility, which is an important thing. But the thing that I'll take with me is a deep, deep love for these young men, uh, for all of our teams that I had the privilege of working with and uh, the privilege of being a part of America's youth development is, is something that you can't quantify or describe. But um, I certainly miss it, but uh, I've been very blessed and I'm thankful to have been a part of it. Well, Coach, there's a young lady up in the press box right now that is looking forward to getting in that car with you and yeah. driving away for a little while. Yeah. Good luck, Coach. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Let's go back upstairs. And the bath for Philip Fulmer after the convincing win over their rival, the Kentucky Wildcats.